Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Ryder, a consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in my latest demonstration video of our recently developed Waxgate, which is due to be launched in early January 2023. We apologise for the delay in the launch. We've just had a few delays with regards to the manufacturing of the tooling device, which is regrettably out of our control, but we have been reassured that it's all going really well and we, I should expect to receive the first spin-off of the Speculum. Uh, that's because the Speculum that we're using with the Waxgate is custom-made and it's, manu it's designed and manufactured by ourselves. So I should receive this in the first week of January for my approval. Um, I've actually, um, just recording and narrating over this for the second time, um, I noticed in my previous upload that it was a bit scratchy, the audio, and I'm not sure why, and it was a bit irritating for myself to... To actually listen to so i decided just to narrate over again hopefully um, there's no interference this time um, so it is currently on youtube and it is currently on facebook so once it's uploaded i will delete them and re-upload so don't panic um, hopefully this is a cleaner version now in this video i just want to explain the rationale and um reasoning behind the development of the wax scope. We've had quite a few queries from a uh, specialist uh, uh, asking us what's the difference and why we've developed it. And so as you're watching this, I'm just going to uh, go off a bit of a tangent and just to explain everything about the wax scope. So um, you, many of you may already be aware that back in 2015 and uh, that myself and colleagues uh, of mine uh, formed a company called Clearwax and we developed and brought to market a device called the iClearscope, uh, which is an endoscope. And uh, the benefits of the endoscope is, and if you've been watching the videos, it's clear to see already, um, is the wide field of view an endoscope provides. Um, using an endoscope, for me, has revolutionised my career and it's been a game changer. Prior to an endoscope, uh, I only ever examine the ear using an otoscope, which is the, kind of the normal ear torch a, a doctor examines your ear with. That's what we were trained with. That's all we were given. Um, so when I first used an endoscope, it was uh, I, I was able to see parts of the ear and definition of the ear that I've never really experienced before. And it really has changed my clinical practice and also my career. So I'm most grateful. However, using an endoscope, and we've discovered this over the years um, throughout all of our training courses that we deliver, can be quite challenging for some specialists. And the main reason for that is an endoscope doesn't incorporate a speculum. Um, so what's a speculum now? You can actually see the speculum um, on the wax scope here. It's the black rim around the edge. And I know a lot of viewers don't enjoy the, the videos with the wax scope for that reason, because the speculum narrows the field of view. Um, but there is a purpose behind a, a speculum. And so what a speculum does, um, a speculum, first of all, it's a hollow funnel-shaped object with one narrow end and the other end being wider. And the narrow end of the speculum is used um, to uh, insert inside the ear canal to widen and straighten the ear. Um, and the specialist does that by holding the wider part of the speculum, so the opposite end of the funnel, um, externally, uh, using their non-dominant hand. And with the use of the non-dominant hand, and by holding the wider part of the, the, the ear funnel, the speculum, they can twist and manipulate the speculum to straighten and widen the ear canal to, to get the earwax in view, to visualise the earwax. The specialist then views inside the speculum using an ENT microscope or head loops and with the alternative contralateral hand, so their dominant hand, they would hold the instrument, insert it through the speculum to make contact with the earwax in order to remo remove it. So um, that's the purpose of a speculum. So it helps uh, an audiologist or an ear care specialist to stretch and widen the ear canal. But of course, an endoscope doesn't have a speculum. So um, unfortunately, our ears, uh, most of our ears anyway, they're not straight um, uh, cylindrical tubes. Our ear canals are uh, bendy and twisty. And a lot of people that have earwax impaction also have narrow ear canals as well. And that makes it 
all the more challenging because with an endoscope you must learn to stretch and widen the ear canal using the endoscope itself. Um, so the way you would do that, for example, in this, so we're just moving on to the right ear now, I would insert the endoscope just past the first bend and uh, where you can see those hairs on the left. And you can just see them coming from left to right on screen. So I'll just insert the endoscope just past those hairs because that's the first bend and then push the cartilage of the endoscope to the left to stretch and widen um, and straighten the ear canal. Once I've managed to do that, I would actually lock my non-dominant hand, which is the hand that's holding the endoscope, to keep the endoscope in position in the ear. So literally lock it in place to keep the entrance of the ear canal um, open and ajar. And then momentarily, I would actually flick attention um, and look inside the ear with my naked eye and visualize the tip of the endoscope in the ear and once I visualized that I would actually insert the instrument using my dominant hand into the ear using the tip of the endoscope as a guide so I would aim for the tip of the endoscope with the instrument and just going over the top of it and by doing that I can not only ensure that I have a safe entry of the instrument into the ear so I don't make contact with the sides of the ear canal so it's not going to be uncomfortable for the patient but by using that technique I've managed to not only stretch and widen the ear canal but I've managed to also insert the instrument which then allows me full reign of the ear canal I can go towards the eardrum and come back out of the eardrum with both the instrument and the endoscope without them overlapping and obstructing one another so uh, and it's a bit more tricky if you're using the left ear actually because sometimes with, when you're doing the left ear some of the cartilage uh, when you put the endoscope into the ear and you're pushing the cartilage on the opposite direction to the right hand side if you're right-handed so i'm right-handed um, the cartilage at the back of the entrance of the ear canal can flap over the tip of the endoscope so when you look in the ear you can't see the tip of the endoscope so that's when you have to also learn to use the instrument to stretch the cartilage up and off the tip of the endoscope to get it in view before you insert it over the tip of the endoscope. So it is quite a challenging skill to acquire and uh, because it requires a lot of hand-eye coordination and bilateral integration, a lot of specialists can find it challenging. And we, we become, obviously that's become very apparent to us during the course of the years of training. And in fact, I saw a video today uh, of a specialist who does upload quite a few videos and um, they actually struggled with that technique and as a result they at times um, lost control of the uh, the instrument within the ear so it was a case of um, a narrow a narrow issue I would say and but it was quite bendy and the wax was quite deep towards the eardrum and instead of stretching the ear canal open with the endoscope and then inserting the instrument into the ear once they've stretched the ear open they were attempting to actually navigate the instrument and the endoscope one after the other so it was led by the instrument into the ear and around the bends um, but because the ear canal was bendy and narrow uh, there came a point that when they were inserting the instrument and the endoscope into the ear the in endoscope and the instrument overlapped and they obstructed one another and that prevented the insertion of the endoscope any further into the ear canal and the endoscope got trapped between the first and second bend and you could actually see the second bend on view. It was obstructing on occasions about a third of the, the view. And so they proceeded to continue further into the ear with the instrument. And because at that stage the endoscope was so far away, um, you could they were trying to remove earwax from a distance and you can just tell that the depth perception wasn't there. So with an endoscope, because unlike a microscope, you don't have binocular vision, you're looking off a 2D screen, so that's monocular vision. To gain depth perception, you must then follow the endoscope towards the wax. Otherwise, you, you don't really have very good depth perception. And because the instrument and endoscope had overlapped on a couple of occasions, the, especially at the beginning, um, the specialist lost control of the suction probe. It was wobbling in the ear, and at one point it hit the side of the ear canal. And on a couple of occasions also, the, the, the endoscope, the, the instrument just wasn't in view at all. And uh, they also had bent the fine end suction probe to even gain access into the ear. And I, quite often I bend the tip of the fine end. 
but that's when I'm removing wax near the eardrum, like off the anterior inferior recess. But you can see the specialist has actually curled this instrument to even gain access into the ear. So um, that's the challenge of an endoscope. So uh, it's not as easy uh, as it appears and hence to develop with the wax scope so with the wax scope um, for me it's the neck it's not a substitute or replacement for the eye clear scope but it's the next best alternative if you can't use the endoscope so if you are interested please do email info at clearwax.co.uk thank you